What's up, guys? I'm Ira Shell, and this is Not For The Week Of Heart. Halloween has become one of the biggest holidays celebrated in the U.S. Even the churches try to get involved as they dress up their trunks and participate in the holiday. This holiday is seen as a fun family experience. But as we stated in our video, Can Christians Trunk or Treat, which is under our Not For The Week Of Heart category, this is an event all Christians should stay away from. This is a night when witches, warlocks, and Satanists look forward to the most. They even regard it as a religious holiday. So what does the church have to do with this kind of darkness? Not only do our modern day witches and warlocks celebrate this night, but the celebration itself is rooted in paganism. As we stated in our video, Can Christians Celebrate Halloween, which is under our Not For The Week Of Heart category, Halloween comes from the pagan festival Samhain, a night when the dead came back and the wall between the supernatural and natural realms was blurred. But that said, let's get into our video. During this season, all of our movies, TV shows, they all change to a darker theme. Even the candy is given new wrapping, commercials, packaging, etc. Now hear me out, could there be something more to the Halloween candy? If we go back to Samhain, the food was used as either an offering for the dead or for appeasement of the evil spirits that wandered during this night. When the Catholic Church came, they tried to make this dark festival lighter by souling, which was going from house to house and promising to pray for the dead souls of the people whom you had received a, a soul cake from. Still, this festival is about offerings for either the dead or the evil spirits. It's still all about communication with evil. Now, as we stated throughout our other videos, spirits never die. They don't just vanish, they adapt with culture and continue the same works, just in a slightly different way. In our culture today, the idea of evil spirits walking the earth, especially during this night, and seeking appeasement seems preposterous, especially to the church. We no longer believe in witches, warlocks, demons, or anything that gives the kingdom of darkness its power. And in doing so, we are actually giving it more power. How, you might ask? Well, because the enemy can work easier if no one believes he's actually working at all. So if the food in Samhain were offerings, then wouldn't the food for Halloween today be offerings as well? Americans are predicted to spend $3.1 billion on Halloween candy alone this year. Just on Halloween candy. As a kid, my friends would make fun of me because I didn't celebrate Halloween. I'm sure statistics like these influenced their parents telling them that it wasn't even a real holiday because it was created by the candy companies, which of course, they would relay back to me. But as we know, this isn't true. In fact, it took the candy manufacturers almost 20 years to get involved in Halloween and produce candy specifically for it. Before this, kids were given homemade goods such as cookies and pieces of cake or fruit and nuts. Some children apparently even received coins and toys. After hearing this, some will return to that statistic we stated a few minutes ago and say that this is why the candy companies got involved in Halloween and target the season so much because it's a big money season. But what if it isn't just about money? See, the kingdom of darkness, it really doesn't care about money, it cares about souls. When Satan tempted Jesus in Matthew 4, 8 through 9, he tempted Jesus with the souls of the earth because that's what Satan owns. Now, of course, Satan was tempting Jesus with that so that Jesus would take it as an out instead of going to the cross, which needs a whole video of its own, but this is the currency that Satan deals in. This is why Jesus asked two questions in Matthew 16, 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? So would it then not stand to reason that Satan would give money, power, influence, etc. to anyone willing to do his bidding? And if there is still some form of morality in the world today, then would it not stand to reason that Satan would continue the pagan rituals of the past behind closed doors until it's acceptable to do out in the open? 
What if this is the reason that the candy companies have taken over the market on what we pass out for Halloween because the candy has been sacrificed or offered to evil spirits? Now, some Christians will say that this is just foolishness because this isn't real and the kingdom of darkness has no power over us and Satan is a toothless lion and all of that kind of stuff. But look at what John saw was the fall of two of the seven churches Jesus called out in the book of Revelation. First, the church at Pergamum. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak, to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. Now the church at Thyatira, Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. Both of these churches Jesus had a problem with because they ate food sacrificed to idols. In fact, look at what the early church apostles wrote to those in Antioch about food sacrificed to idols in Acts chapter 15 verses 28 through 29. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements that you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourself from these, you will do well, fare well. Throughout our Bibles, you will find the same sentiment that we, the church, are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols. So what if this is what they are continuing through Halloween candy? It was an offering in the days of old why would it not be an offering today? Matter of fact, I saw a video on YouTube of witches doing seances over a bottle of water so that they could sell it and whatever spirit was on that water, whoever would drink that water, they would be filled by that spirit. If you really think that the kingdom of darkness is doing absolutely nothing, you're not paying attention. There's a reason why Peter describes Satan as this. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. He's not a toothless lion, he's a roaring lion, and he's seeking someone to devour. A toothless lion can't devour anyone. So with that said, let me just pose that question one more time. If it was an offering in the days of old, why would it not be an offering to this day? If it's the same festival, just changed up a bit, why would the food not be for the same purpose? Just changed up a bit. While you think about it, let's sum everything up for you guys. Halloween comes from the ancient festival of Samhain. This was a festival of the dead and evil spirits. During this time, they would leave food offerings to appease the evil spirits as well as leaving food for the dead spirits they believed roamed the earth on this night. If spirits never died, then it would stand to reason that if we are still celebrating this ancient festival through our modern day Halloween, then we'd also be consuming the offerings through the Halloween candy. I hope you all enjoyed this video and that it opened your eyes to a few dark actions going on behind closed doors. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.